us at this lunchtime. Great turnout. Woohoo! Get it? Hello, Get guys. in. Yeah. <laughs> Boys versus girls challenge, the battle of democracy. No, I'm joking. So, just to give you a little bit of context why we're here. Um, basically, if you look, look at the queues outside, look at the queues, people queuing up for fans, for signatures. It's, it's amazing to see that, the energy um, that, has, that has come from YouTube in such a short space of time and, and from the creators themselves. And, and my sort of ask really today, um, and I don't know if we'll ever get to the answer, but for some of you might be aware, the political parties that run our country, control our lives, every decision that affects us, and especially some of you guys that are creating content, issues around censorship and, and things that control in the internet, all of these things affect us. The political parties will have their party conferences in October, November, and they won't be a touch of the energy, the cues, the passion that people have got here, and why? Why? You know, it amazes me. So my, my ask here, and I've, I've got friends to join me today, is can YouTube be that catalyst for the political revolution? Because something's got to give. At the moment, um, you know, especially young people, they're not registered to vote. They don't turn out to vote. Many don't really understand politics in the context of it's just opinions and how we voice our opinions and how we, how we play a role in shaping our lives. So I, I wonder, really, is this time, is this time now where, where democracy can be transformed and is YouTube the answer? So can I ask you guys first over there, girls versus boys? Um, oh, I think you know these guys. You don't know me. My name's Mike Sarney. I'm, I founded an organization called Bite the Ballot. It was an idea in a classroom and it's grown to now a national organization and its, and its sole aim is to basically empower young people to, to kick the status quo out, really, and, and show that this, you know, we believe in the decisions that affect us and we can play a huge role. Um, our biggest achievement to date using the guys here was um, registering 50,000 young people in February. We created a day called National Voter Registration Day and we're just going to now try and see if this energy can, can emerge into something spectacular um, for the elections in 2015. So guys, can YouTube be the catalyst to transform our democracy? I hope so. Can you hear me okay? Everybody? Yeah. I think pull the mics closer. Hello. I can't hear the guinea goat. Um, I, I think it definitely has the potential. Um, but YouTube is a powerful platform and you can, if you, in the right way, you can use it for anything. But it's before you use YouTube to kind of change things, you still need to get people interested in it first. But I guess then you can use YouTube to do that and then hopefully you get this nice sort of circle effect. But it would be really nice if you got like the the absolute energy and the 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 pure like passion for things of people lining up out there like to the to the polling stations. It's like I'm gonna go vote, yeah. That would be awesome. I have to be honest, say, the, say about the same. We're having a lot of trouble. I know Hannah and I did um, videos about the political tag, where we were just trying to get more young people involved in politics and just interested. But personally, what I found was just putting the title, the political tag, loads of people switched off instantly. They didn't even bother watching. They were that put off. But when I changed the title, more people started getting involved. And then before I knew it, the video had this big discussion thread. But mm. it was all because of the title. I think if we... Uh, you you got to trick it, them to click on it. Yeah. Mm. It's, um, it, politics comes across quite boring. I mean, I'm one of these people that's come into it quite late. I find it quite boring, but it is important. Um, but no, if you take the politicalness away from like uh, advertising it, then it makes it more appealing, I suppose. That's one big the problem. The P word. The P word. Yeah. It's a dirty word. <laughs> Let's ask. I mean, guys, anyone, can you put your hands up if you think politics is boring? Most of the room. <laughs> Yeah. It's amazing, really, isn't it? Like, ask ourselves why, you know. The, has anyone ever been educated or engaged in politics at school? You've done it for yourself. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I knew nothing until I studied at A-level, and then I just got angry. 
Yeah. And it was just like from being ignorant to angry. Because like we had peace, I don't know what it's called now, but we had PCHE lessons like once a week mm. and it covered everything from like sex education to typical boring stuff, uh, medical stuff. But it honestly, for me, didn't teach me anything. I got to like A levels and I still didn't know anything. Um, yeah. And it's really only as a 21 year old that I've only started taking notice. And I've had to like go out of my way to find out the information. Yeah. Um, one thing that's really frustrating is that um, where I am at my university, every couple of months or whatever, I get loads of pamphlets coming in from different political parties, and they just belt you with all this information. And because you get this from all different political parties, you just don't know what information to take in and what's legit or believable. Mm. I find that mm. hard. There's just there's the balance of having nothing and having so much you don't know what to do. Yeah. Well, we've we've also got um, this young man to my left. Battle of the beards here, by the way. Uh, the girls are losing, as you can see. Um, I had a shave this morning. Oh, damn it. She went back on the agreement. Ben White, um, I collared this young man. He's, uh, he basically is a strategist. He's created channels and, and done it predominantly for brands and for money. And I said to him, can you do it to help me make history? Um, and lured him in and now he, and now he can't leave. So Ben, do, do you think um, YouTube can be that sort of catalyst to change the face of the country? Yeah, I certainly do. Um, yeah, like Mike said, you won't know my face, but uh, I've been involved with a lot of channels and help strategize and bring YouTubers together. Uh, and I understand that mm, the creators, as you all know, have different demographics that support them. And they are, for me, the modern day celebrity, whereas as you can see upstairs, the channel of communication between a YouTuber and their fans is so much stronger than, say, Johnny Depp and his fans. Because, as I can see up there, when I'm walking around and, you know, a YouTuber will actually take time and they'll speak to them and they actually have grown with them from their bedroom to now the YouTubers are working with brands, they're working on TV, on radio, so that when they say something and the way that they actually understand their fans, they will listen to them and they will go there. I've, I worked on a, um, a YouTube channel, I don't know if there's any sports fans in the room, but I built a YouTube channel called Copper 90, um, which probably most people in here won't like. Um, but I worked with KSI and a few of the gaming YouTubers and we hadn't had more than 200 subscribers in one day. We worked with KSI and in the first day we had 40,000 subscribers and it was insane. And then from there I learned the different YouTubers that had different demographics and started going to brands and connecting them with the right messages. And I think what they're doing at Bite the Ballot and I've, I saw before I got involved that they'd worked with Becky and Hannah, um, Jamal. Marl Edwards and a few of the other big YouTubers and my, my thought would be that the more people that we can get involved and I don't know if there is any creators in here but if there is reach out afterwards because we're going to be creating a few documentaries different resources um, and I genuinely believe that we could make history come 2015 and if not 2015 2020 or 2025 new these new leaders will emerge definitely I mean what's missing what's missing from politics at the minute so that the masses for the, of these guys upstairs. I mean, just a quick question. Can I ask anyone that, that can vote, are you likely to vote when your first election comes around? Can you put your hands up? Yeah, who's going to be able, That's who's going to be old enough in hey. 2015? Who, okay. who is 18 yeah. now, or will be 18 um, in May? Only just at the front here. Just turn. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Um, I think there's a real lack of representation of young people in politics, and we just see all of these old white dudes, Thank you. and none of us feel like they actually have our best interests at heart, and actually they really know what the issues are that we really care about. Because when I've spoken to um, my friends who are fellow young people, um, they've always said, oh, I really don't like politics, I don't care about politics, I don't vote, blah, blah, blah. They'll say all of that, but then they'll follow with it. But, um, and then start talking really passionately about, about immigration or how they, or their student loan or some stuff like that that, you know, really angered them or, or something that they thought was an injustice was being done to them and my reply to them was like that's politics like you do you are interested in politics because these things that you're complaining about are what politicians can fix 
potentially, hopefully. Um, and it's about making that connection between the things that you're interested in and realizing that, oh, okay, that and those decisions that are made that affect your life are done in Parliament. And it's really hard to, for a lot of people to make that connection, I think. I mean, just, just looking at the numbers, I'll come out to the audience shortly, but if you, if you just look at the numbers and understand, right, our politicians, um, they, they carve up 900 billion pounds a year. Um, which, you know, to look after 66 million people is probably quite a tough ask to figure out where best to put that money. When it comes to making difficult decisions, if you've got a certain part of society that aren't registered to vote and don't turn out, and you've got a certain part of society that do register to vote and are turning out, and they will punish you at the ballot box if you let them down, who is it easier to let down? And, and sadly, it's this, it's this age group, it's us. There's no coincidence that tuition fees tripled to £9,000. There's no coincidence that EMA was taken away, youth clubs are closing, there's um, more cuts to youth services. It's because someone looks at this as a balance sheet and thinks, well, they don't vote, mm. they're not registered, they can't punish us, so let's just make that decision. And that can change in an instant. We can register to vote online now, so we're going to start making content, hopefully sort of thought-provoking, and quite unconventional content that will be the, 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 the sort of catalyst to get people to click through and register because it's a case of demand and supply. If, if politicians look and think this whole demographic is growing and they're registered, who are they going to vote for? We will see politicians still going to the OAP homes to have a photo with Ethel for the paper, but going to the schools, going to the youth clubs and coming to you to ask what you want. And, and that's quite an amazing concept. I mean, you guys saw, I mean, Becky, can you just, yeah. you know, you played the basics with us. And I was going to say, the, the game, we did this game online a couple of months ago, and it was, we all, we all went into it thinking, oh, this is going to be easy. We were allocated like £100 to, um, oh, what's the word, distribute across different, um, different parts of the country, like health and the army or finance, that sort of stuff. Welfare. And at first it was like, this is good, we can just do £50 there, £10 there. But then when you actually started making it quite difficult, putting in the people that were voting. So to begin with, we of course did it for ourselves, put all the money in education and young people. But Screw the army. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, when we added in the, the audience of the elder generations, we suddenly thought, oh goodness, we are really limited with what we can do. Um, yeah, and then there was like the second part of the game where twenty pounds of the budget was cut, and so then we had to redistribute the money with twenty pounds less. Yeah, and like as much as I hate the politicians, they really have like a really hard them. job. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Mm. Yeah, I think things like that is where the, like, the people in that community need to make that more like publicly known and the politicians need to be held accountable for that. Uh, good, right. Go on, a, yeah. a few more people then. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can get in direct touch with your MP. Yeah, could I just Twitter. second that as well? You, you, go, you can go to your MP surgery, and the, the thing is what we want to do with, we're actually talking about launching a news channel, which is around world issues and taking a different topic each week. Uh, that's going to launch in a couple of months. Um, but what we're going to do from that is say Jamal Edwards is one of the people that's involved. Afterwards, if something's not happened and you know a big YouTuber, maybe get them to go to the, G the, the surgery and make it, let a message out there, even if it's for your own personal Twitter or if you are a creator, you could connect with other creators in, even in your area um, and get a group of you to go down. I think it would be pretty amazing. Can you vlog for in an MP surgery? <laughs> I wonder if you you can what? Can you vlog at the surgery? Uh, maybe before you went in, yeah. and then maybe when you came out, they probably wouldn't l like you were filming them. But the thing is, you know, you've got to also take into account there are, as you said, there are.
channels of communication, we don't utilize them, and many of us don't because we're never told, or we float our way through years of education without ever being told you can register to vote at 16, you can do this, you can do that. And yes, someone will say, well, all the information's there, it's online. But ultimately, it's, it's in font size five, it's just mm. blur. And this is why I, I sort of put it to you guys. Can YouTube be that catalyst to change it? Can people make content to answer these questions that's on their minds? Can we raise awareness? Can we press the buttons to... to I, was, I was going to say, I think there's a number of issues, and one of them is, as you all said, this sort of mix of information, the fact that there's an overload of information, there's too much information there, and people either feel that it's becoming homogenised or that there's just too many choices to... Yeah, can you all hear each other? <laughs> just at the end there. Yes. Can you all hear each other? Um, so I think with it being online, that will also help a lot as well, because it stops people having to actively go out to the ballot boxes and actually submit their votes. I think if it's online, mm -hmm. it's going to make it a lot easier mm -hmm. for that. But I think the other issue is that people don't actually realise how much power they have in influencing mm -hmm. decisions. Mm -hmm. People usually think, well, we make one vote, and then we don't get to do anything for the next four years. There needs to be more active involvement with this on a more regular basis yeah. so people can actually make more decisions. Yeah, we'll get a few more questions and then come back to you guys to answer. The two um, ladies there, fifth row back, and then I will, sorry, come to you. Hey, so um, I work a lot with um, people, uh, young people in Hackney. Um, it's quite a deprived area, as I'm sure most people in this room know. Um, and they're quite, act they're actually very much, they're very passionate about politics. They really like knowing about it because obviously it's something that affects them quite a lot. They're all from very poor backgrounds. They're all for the most part, they're all quite low education, like their low ability, because I work in a new build academy, so it's quite, um, we're starting up. But what I find a lot with them is like, some of them don't have internet access at home, some of them don't, um, some of them don't have Twitter, some of them don't have access to smartphones, they don't have all this, re all these resources. What do you think you can do sort of out, like YouTube's a really good starting point, and mm. I agree, like I've seen Becky's videos, obviously, um, like, <laughs> I mean, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you now, I know you too now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, basically what, I, um, what I'm asking is what you, would you want to do outside of that platform? Because obviously it's quite difficult if you don't have a lot of subscribers to boost that out. What would you like to do outside of it? How would you like to take that further, like, to the boroughs? Okay, we'll, we'll come to that. We'll get a couple more. Did you have a question next door? And then I know you've waited, thanks. Um, it's more of a thing that I want to say. You've said about... Um, the size five fonts, and I was too shy to put my hand up straight away, just kind of like, hi. Um, and when I remember distinctly getting very pissed off during the European elections, when I'm a language student, so obviously I care about everything EU, and I'm telling all my friends all the time, like, no, it's not like that. They actually do lots of things that are really useful. And I was looking for, I'm awful at graphics, and I was trying to give them this information. I was looking like, it'd be much easier to show if there was a graphic about this. And I was a bit slow. I was to try and grab some of my friends to get some graphics out uh, to explain what things in the EU do, but also to compare parties, someone impartial to compare it, because I am struggling as someone who has all of this input from studying foreign languages and my uni is always going on at us about how useful the EU is. I interact directly with them. Um, I struggle to find out the information. If I'm struggling, my friends who don't have this connection and the youth, I also do some youth work up in Nottingham, um, the youth I work with, how are they even going to get near it? And I think, although it's very much, oh, it's just a pretty font, it can make a lot of difference. And if you look at all of the stuff here, it looks great and everyone wants to look at it. Um, but we have so much, it would be so easy and yet, no one has done it. Maybe that's my fault for not bagging my friends, but... <laughs> can we yeah. answer those before I forget them? Yeah. Go on then. We'll, do, we'll answer those two, and then can you... Um, also, after you... Could you pass the mic to this lady first, sir? Because she's, she's waited for me at the front. Okay, yeah. you, you um, guys want to start? Yeah, I think what you said about bringing it off-platform to people that maybe don't have access to um, like the internet or don't maybe don't watch YouTube videos is if we like start with YouTube where there are really dedicated audiences where their favorite YouTuber says, hey, click this and register to vote. They'll do it, they, they will do it. But then on top of that, you need to be like, and tell all your friends. Mm. So that's the way it will create kind of like a ripple effect. So YouTube, I, yeah, YouTube is a great starting place. And I, I get that not everybody watches YouTube, but if you, 
word like yeah mouth, yeah, yeah. Word, of, word of mouth is still like a brilliant tool to spread um, Thank messages you. Uh, I don't know how to phrase it YouTube could be something that happens in the near future because what I was going to say was is that for schools I know this is just me talking off the top of my head I know it's not as simple mm. as just changing the curriculum but even just starting with the politics stuff very early on getting children into it from a very young age then by the time they get to 16 it's not this boring thing that they don't want to know about They've They've grown up learning about it. Because yeah. no, one thing we did for, I was in charge of the school council, and there's one, there's 1,800 students at my school, and we did a fake election mm, voting we for did a particular teacher to be in charge of something, something like that. Um, but most of the students around me were just like, oh, well, that teacher's red. Red's my favorite color. I'm voting for red. And that is, no one really. We did a whole serious. campaign and we um, gave people cupcakes. Yeah. to get them to vote for us. That's it, cupcakes at the ballot yeah. box, I like that. But oh, even so just like getting also, children, I know that's very... Yeah, also, um, okay. by, by the ballot, do go into schools and the resources that are created and put onto YouTube, we then go in and play them at schools. But again, like you said, the government won't subsidise it and pay for it. You know, but then we try and talk to people, of philanthropists and different people, and they're like, the government should pay for this. But the government don't want young people registered to vote because they're scared of them, especially the current crop that are in there. So I totally believe And when you're in the schools, I used to be a bit of an unruly child. I come from a council estate in Blackpool. You know, I don't come from one that I don't, you know, a really deprived area. Get um, out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, when we went out the first time I went into a school with Bite the Ballot to watch a session of the basics, there was about four kids that looked like they were rebelling and I thought that was me when I was at school and the problem is with rebelling against the system is the system was created for you to rebel against so you're already doing what the people wanted you to do. It's, they've done a really good job. job. Uh, the governments over the past however long, I don't know, hundreds of years or whatever, but they've done a really great job of making us unengaged and, you know, they like to like that. Yeah, well, it's, it, you know, it, it's amazing, as you said, and, and I think you're right. Going into schools, if anyone has got time, you can you can look at what we, we created. Two experiential learning games. They're called the Basics. They're on the Bite the Ballot YouTube channel. Um, Becky stars in it, and it, it's it's amazing because it, it enables the members of staff or, or a young person to just press play on YouTube, and then when the pause button comes up, you guide the debate or the discussion. And afterwards, it really leaves people thinking, Wow. First of all, why don't I know this? And second of all, actually, we've got a lot of power if we just respect our rights to be different, our individuality, but come together. We've got a lot of power if we exercise it. Mm. Um, and to answer your question about like the information and graphics and stuff, I always thought that like we're obsessed with personality tests we want to know more about ourselves and they get so many clicks and so many people do them like all these buzzfeed quizzes and they're just to be the equivalent of like which political party are you and they do exist like you can you can you can google but i don't know if like any of the really really popular sites do those kind of things and for people to be like super excited like i'm a green party like in the same way they'd be like i'm a hufflepuff you know <laughs> i'm divergent <laughs> Hello. 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 Um, just a few points. Um, the first one is the issue of language, because politicians have a tendency um, to be intentionally obtuse and obscure, mm -hmm. and to distort and deceive, and alienate people that aren't in their little clique through the use of language. Mm. Political jargon. Mm. Just. And how will, I mean, how are you um, going to use the platform to kind of decode political jargon? And then another thing, how are you going to, as YouTube is a free medium in terms of what you can say, how do you avoid um, people just voting for whoever, like if Becky had is pro a certain party and her fans will just follow her because they like her. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you avoid that and try and keep people objective and asking questions and following the issues rather than following their favorite YouTuber? And how do you also do you avoid the inevitable, like, possibili the, the possibility that information and political views can be distorted on YouTube because it's an open free medium and like certain facts can be obscured and certain like slants can be taken and information isn't 
objective and they can be kind of distortion mm. and lying about certain issues or certain historical facts, etc. And people just follow what, mm. the, what they've been told rather than like digging deeper. Well, I, I think you combine the two really. So our, our platform is going to avoid jargon. It, it always tries to say exactly how it is. We always offer politicians the opportunity to, to comment. Ben's been working on a project that we're loosely calling Leaders Live, and it's going to it's going to happen in YouTube after the after the political party conferences, October November, where we're going to have an hour at YouTube with the five top leaders, including the Greens and UKIP, and an audience of 30. But in the audience, there will be influence that bring numbers and they're going to be questioned and quizzed but it's streamed live and I think that's what we're yet to see they're, they're, the political parties are yet to feel that pressure of there's a lot of people eyes on me comments are instantaneous it will be fed back to me can I it's going to be a completely different ball game than sitting there comfortably on question time where I can ramble on for so long and then we just end up moving on so it is a slow process and also just can on the just, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, uh, <laughs> just get my name down. Uh, also, with the language thing, so what I, what I want to do is I want to find a kind of an animator um, that we can, as the manifestos come out, um, and then leading into next year, uh, leading towards the election. Sorry, we actually take the manifesto, we take the language that is in there, animate the leader of the party, and then actually do it in normal language. And then to lead that onto your other question about, is it right that, yes, people would follow Hada or Becky or Jamal or anybody, any influence that we use, is to use YouTube, I think, as the platform to catch people and to catch their attention, and then to drive them to certain resources. We're at the moment, we're trying to create a VAA, which is a vote match tool, basically but again in normal language so is this your opinion on this is this your opinion on this and then at the end it breaks it down by interest and segment so I, I really care about environment and who do who do I align with in environment wow I'm conservative but then yes. my second favorite would be this and this this and then at the end <laughs> I think all three of us are going to talk the same. Yeah, well, I, I was just about to say, I, I would always encourage my viewers to register to vote and to turn out to vote, um, but I don't think I've ever mentioned anywhere online who I actually vote for. Um, no. So I think it's, uh, yeah, well, it doesn't really matter. It's like, um, it, is, it is scary, though, not, mm. not just with um, politics, that subject matter. Anything we talk about, we have the potential to give the wrong impression, or it, it, we get that all the time with whatever we put up. Um, and I guess it, we have to take it upon ourselves to do the best we can. I mean, we will get it wrong sometimes. Mm. Um, but no, what you said about um, followers or fans, whatever you want to call them, um, doing what we do, I think if we make it clear at the end of our videos, do your own thing. Um, vote for who you want. Don't vote just because so-and-so is voting or because I'm voting. Um, maybe we just have to really push that. Um, yeah. We have to direct to you guys, because you guys, yeah, we're trying our best, but you guys know all the facts and stuff. <laughs> so we're we, trying. We know that. We're supposed to. But it's also, guys, it's worth noting as well, a lot of the times when we meet, so we go to universities as well, and we meet a lot of people that say, you know what, I've registered to vote, I voted Lib Dem, they went back on their promise, I'm never voting again, there's no point. And it's like, well, you know, that is actually a really poor outlook. We can't just be dismissive like that. Politics is a long journey, and, and if actually, if you do feel let down, go to the ballot box and, and spoil your ballot paper. Cross through it, draw, draw a rude picture, write some rude words, because every candidate gets shown them. And imagine, after 2010, 60% of young people didn't turn out to vote. And the press jumped on the bandwagon and said, young people are apathetic, the silent generation. They don't care what people have fought and died for. Mm. Imagine the press in 2015 if 60% of people that weren't Draw, gonna go on the ballot paper. drew dicks and fannies yeah, yeah, on the ballot paper. Yeah, yeah. That five, would make a statement. There's 5.4, I think, million uh, young people between 18 to 24 years old. In the EU, UKIP won with four million votes. Imagine if those 5.6 million people went out and, like you said, draw penises on the thing. So actually, a, a, a rude picture be your parties, it sends a stronger message. I think Russell Brandon, what he's been saying is, yeah, I agree with nearly everything that he says, apart from don't vote. Yeah. Because if you don't vote, then that means you don't care and you're happy with the status quo the way it is. So send a stronger message. I've actually taken time out of my day to come down and doodle on your, on democracy, basically. Get creative, so, you know, spend at least half an hour in yeah. the 
yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. make yeah. an absolute piece of art. They'll, they, you put more effort into that than they do to running the country. Yeah. We take a couple more questions and then uh, and then there's a rally cry from us before we go. Can we be quick and go with I think the, in that, the yeah, the gentleman there, gentleman in the middle, and then gentleman at the back. I was going to say, do you think there should be a none of the above option, and if that reaches a certain threshold, yes, should it be taken yeah. into consideration? Yeah. And there should Ron. be a re-election. There should be a Ron. Mm. Well, um, yeah, reopen yeah, 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 re nominations. nominations. Oh. And yeah, well, yeah I definitely Ron. agree. Yep, Ron I do. Or imagine this: if none of the, if none of the above, <laughs> if so many people tick none of the above, and then it was like an open jury service, so there was a percentage of seats in Parliament that were empty because no one voted, and then we could just rope all of you. Okay, you got two weeks in Parliament. You're going to decide internet laws. You're going to decide what we do with the NHS. Would anything get done, though? No, be probably not. Fine. We'd make a video, though. We want chaos. Hi, hi there. Um, it's quite amazing that we're coming up to about the biggest change in the United Kingdom in about nearly 300 years with the Scottish independence referendum mm. next month, and there's been an almost deafening silence on it on YouTube. It's quite amazing. I mean, there's so many people that don't even know it's happening. I mean, they'll be able to tell you what Dan and Phil are up to or yeah. what Ben Cook's been doing with his hair that week, yeah. but they don't even know that this massive change could have potentially affect their lives. And uh, also, they've dropped the eight voting age to 16, so it's very relevant to young people. Are you mm. going to be voting? Uh, yeah, I will be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess. I guess I haven't really um, spoken about it at all because I. I'm, um, it only affects me indirectly, yes. and I'm, I'm not Scottish, so I don't really think I, I'm allowed to have to say. I have a very selfish reason for Scotland to stay part of the United Kingdom. Um, but I'm not Scottish, so I can't be like, everyone vote no because of me. <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, um, so I've not really. It's just talked a personal thing. The stuff I talk about doesn't come into it. Um, no, I, I'm one of those people that l I feel really bad saying this, and I'm sorry to shoot myself in the foot, but I really don't know what's going on, and I feel that I should. Um, I just, if you don't watch the news every single day and really zone into what's happening, it's very easy to fall behind. I know roughly what's happening, but I don't know all the different facts, which is very bad. I'm sorry, everybody. I feel very, <laughs> very bad. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, well, we've seen in the States a sort of uptake and recognition that political or politically active YouTubers have, you know, reached as a stage um, when uh, Mr. Oakley and Han Hart and the various people went to meet um, President Obama. Mm. Um, and I just, I came a little bit late, I'm sorry, but I just heard that you'll be doing a live talk with the various leaders here in the UK, which is actually fantastic. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but how long, or do you think that it will take here in the UK or indeed in Europe for us as you know as YouTubers or as a YouTube community to reach that level of recognition um, just to be immediately sort of said he's a YouTuber he's politically active and he has a valid point or opinion to be you know recognized or whatever it is. Yeah. It hasn't happened already. I know With well I mean we're doing. If you, just to summarize yeah. I know we've run out of time now but the, the Obama one was amazing the President Obama brought the top 12 YouTubers to the White House asked them how he could spread the word about health.gov they each come up with a different idea and he said right I'll do your idea on your channel and I think it sent three million people to health.gov in three days how do we get someone like David Cameron to think, you know what, these people got a lot of reach, I'm going to bring them in so I can communicate this message effectively? I don't know, but I will, I will kind of leave you with this. Imagine the suffragettes fought 100 years for the right to vote. Would it have taken that long if they could communicate as quickly and as effectively as we can today? It's, it's an amazing concept. I don't know how long it will take, but the more of us that get involved, the more of us that drag our friends and say, you know what, you might not understand it all, but register to vote and let's start kicking some ass and showing that we do care because we've got, we're, we're controlled by a tiny percentage of people. That most of them don't even know how to use the internet. And it's this revolution <laughs> that needs to sort of roam forward. Any final comments from you guys? Vote. Um, yeah, register to vote and vote in the general election 2015. If you can, if you can yeah. legally. Spoil yeah. your ballot, take power. Yeah. Any, any content makers, you know, February is a massive month for us. It's National Voter Registration Day. Anyone can check out what we when's achieved the, last year. When's the deadline year. to register? The, the deadline to register is 11 days before the general election. Mm. So we're, we're going to try... Now. You know, any content makers, anyone that can start making things and, and try and inspire their community, it's, it's down to all of us. We can't just assume that other people will do it. We, we've got to do it for ourselves. Yeah. And tell your friends. Yeah. Cool. 
Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.